Hello mortals! I am the goddess who created the text world of Listernia and I have decided to become a booktuber. Why? Because, because I'm an idiot. But books are my passion. I was an English lit major. I know a little bit about creative writing, so my plan is to review one book a week. If you are interested in a drag queen reviewing books, please subscribe and hit the uh, bell thing for notifications. For my first book, I wanted to pick an older book. I know, I know, new books are young and exciting and sexy. Who doesn't like uh, peeking at lists of new releases? But I wanted to start by reviewing an older book. Let's show some love to old pieces of work. Let's take a trip back in time. All right, all right, I can pick up a cue. Picture it. Sicily, 1912. The year is 1975. Science fiction was king, and very little fantasy could be found. And you guys, if you want to know what it was like being a book lover of fantasy in the 70s and the 80s, because it was a lot different than it is now. So let me know down below in the comments if you would like some type of retrospective. Anyway, the year is 1975, and even though there was very little fantasy published at that time, there was enough to restart a new literary award called the World Fantasy Award. So the first novel to receive the award was The Forgotten Beasts of Eld by Patricia A. McKillop. Could this be the best fantasy novel the world has ever seen? Well, at least it was in 1975. So, uh, I'd like my first review to be about The Forgotten Beasts of Eld by Patricia McKillop. I'll rate this book, like I will all my books, in five categories, and then average the categories out for an average and let you know if I will zap the book or bless the book. The first category for this novel is writing. And when we talk about the forgotten beasts of Eld, we simply have to talk about the writing. Now, there are two types of polarities in writing. There is clear window writing on one end and stained glass on the other. Clear window is where the writing is clean and transparent, that you barely notice the writing itself. Clear like crystal. Clear, clear like a gin and tonic. Mm. In other words, you watch the story through a clear window and don't notice the window itself. So you don't really notice the writing. And we all like looking into clear windows and that's probably the majority of at least adult fiction these days. In this type of writing, the writing is just the medium to carry the story. Brandon Sanderson describes himself as a clear window writer. At the opposite end of the spectrum is stained glass writing where the writing is so gorgeous and rich, that you are enchanted by the writing itself. We're talking ornate writing, ornate like a chandelier, ornate like Liberace's uh, bathrobe, ornate like a peacock's bottom. What is stained glass writing? It's when you notice the use of language, the use of metaphor, the use of imagery, as much as a story that's being told. I'd say Patrick Rothfuss or Gene Wolfe. Are examples of stained glass writers. 
and we can add Patricia McKillop to the group of stained glass writers. Her writing is so beautiful that reading it literally can bring tears to my eyes. Uh, let's read the first paragraph of The Forgotten Beasts of El. The wizard healed, coupled with a poor woman once, in the king's city of Mondor, and she bore a son with one green eye and one black eye. Healed, who had two eyes black as the black marshes of Fearbolg, came and went like a wind out of the woman's life. But the child, Mick, stayed in Mondor until he was fifteen. Big-shouldered and strong, he was apprenticed to a smith, and men who came to have their carts mended or horses shod were inclined to curse his slowness and his sullenness until something would stir in him, sluggish as a marsh beast, waking beneath murk. Then he would turn his head and look at them out of his black eye, and they would fall silent, shift away from him. There's a streak of wizardry in him, like the streak of fire in damp, smoldering wood. He spoke rarely to men with his brief, rough voice, but when he touched a horse, a hungry dog, or a dove in a cage on market days, the fire would surface in his black eye, and his voice would run sweet as a daydreaming voice of the sly noon river. There's not much more I can say except McKillop's writing gets five stars. And that will be a rare score in this category for me. But hey, this is the best fantasy novel the world has ever seen. In 1975 it was. The next category is plot. The plot centers around a young woman. Uh, her name is Sybil, who is the descendant of a line of powerful wizards. These wizards enchant magical, legendary creatures, and they live in an isolated mountain retreat or sanctuary. And Sybil is completely isolated and cut off from all of humanity until a knight shows up. Who are you? We are the knights who say... On her doorstep, she almost kills the knight, but the uh, legendary uh, beasts that li live with her advisor, that might not be a great idea. But it turns out that the knight, his name is Corin, is carrying a baby boy. And the baby is named Tam, and he happens to be Sybil's nephew by her sister, which is a surprise to Sybil because she didn't even know she had a sister. Sisters, sisters. Her mother died when she was born, when Sybil was born. And, uh, oh, it's all very Shakespearean and soap opera-ish, but. I can kiss who I want. No, you can't, you can't kiss her. Why, because she's your niece? No, you nitwit, because she's my daughter. <laughs> And your daughter! Anyway, if Sybil doesn't take Tam, the king will kill the child because Tam is allegedly the bastard of the queen, who is Sybil's sister. Drama, drama, drama. Sybil eventually relents and takes the child. Much of the plot revolves around Sybil learning how to be human, learning how love learning how to love, first by taking care of the child with the help of this old crusty witch and later to love a man. And by the way, when I say she learns to love a man, it's not her nephew, the child she raised, it's someone else. So I wanted to make that clear. She also learns how to hate, hate the king who seeks to kill Tam or tries to control her. She also learns what it's like beyond the walls of her sanctuary, where her sanctuary where she's lived all her life with her legendary creatures and I know I know what I'm describing doesn't sound like much of a plot and it's not an epic story by any means it's more of a journey within Sybil an introspective journey 
If you're looking for battles and quests and high stakes, this may not be the book for you, but if you're looking for a graceful, thoughtful, romantic tale, you could find it here. I give the plot four stars to the category of characters. I personally love Sybil. She's utterly confident in why not. She has magical powers beyond almost any other wizard in the realm. But she is so alone and she's so out of touch with the most basic of human relationships. So she is incredibly naive and hungers terribly for love even if she doesn't know she's hungering for it. She knows she has immense magical powers. And that leads to a bit of hubris, being too confident in her own powers. And the character arc of Sybil is pretty intense, from learning a mother's love for a child and then a mother's love for a child that's no longer a child. Learning to love a man, learning what friendship is, what betrayal is, what trust is, and more importantly for Sybil, what trust is not. The secondary characters are, well, there's Tam, Sybil's adopted son, who is a delight. He isn't developed very much. He's really not a main character. There's Corin, the knight who brought Tam to Sybil and returns later, who is a much more central figure. And the old witch, Melga, who becomes Sybil's closest friend, whose powers are tiny compared to Sybil's, but Milga is wise where Sybil is naive. So it's a nice dichotomy. And of course, we can't forget the legendary beasts of Eld who love Sybil and advise her. My favorite is the uh, Siren, the giant boar, who is called the Keeper of Riddles. <laughs> I give the characters five stars, no question. The next category is pacing. Now, this is not a fast-paced novel by any means. It is a character-driven story rather than a plot-driven story. So while the plot moves forward at a steady pace, the story is meant to be introspective and thoughtful rather than an action adventure where the scenes are galloping along towards some earth-shaking climax. Well, there are some action scenes. The climax is more internal within Sybil rather than external. I give pacing three stars. The last category is magic. And when I say magic, I don't mean the magic system, but rather the magic of the novel itself. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? The je ne sais quoi of what makes you fall in love with a book. The gut feeling, if you will, of what you get after you finish a novel. And this is a completely subjective category. It can elevate a flawed novel to a beloved book. And have you ever asked yourself, why do I like this book, even though it has a lot of issues. I have this gut feeling that I still like it. What's going on? This is the magic of a novel. It should come as no surprise that I give The Forgotten Beasts of Eld five stars for the magic category. I truly do love this story. This is one of those books, at least it is for me, that has a lot of layers and depth. And after reading it, I feel like I witnessed something significant that something changed to me after reading it. It's hard to explain and I'm sure different books affect people in different ways. But for me, this book was really impactful. So, averaging all the ratings, the total is 4.4 stars. Will I zap The Forgotten Beasts of Eld or will I give it a blessing? Of course it gets my blessing. This is one of my favorite books. I hope you'll give The Forgotten Beasts of Eld a chance 
if you haven't read it. I know it's an older fantasy, but I think it may be one of those books that finds a warm place in your literary heart. If you have already read it, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it, if you agree with me or not. And if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more reviews from this old drag queen, please subscribe. Now, I'm just starting this channel, so if you have books you'd like me to review, whether they're new books or old books, fantasy, science fiction, horror, I love all the speculative fiction categories. Uh, chances are I may have already read it, but drop down into the comments and, and leave a suggestion of what you might want me to read. Until then, may all the books you read be blessed. Thank you.